This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? Your gift of $25 or more goes a long ways. Covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. A series of challenges coming up through the courts will determine the shape of religious freedom for our children. And the Supreme Court just passed on an important case involving a wedding photographer. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard along with Bruce Hausconnect who watches the courts for Focus on the Family. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Stuart. You may be wondering, why are they standing outside? Well, our, our crew uh, actually is working with our partner organization, Focus on the Family, and they are in another state uh, working on a project for the upcoming film called Irreplaceable. The focus on the family will be releasing next month. Uh, so we thought we'd just wing it out here. It's nice outside. Springtime in the Rockies, as they say. So we're just hanging out outside for a bit. Bruce, we're going to talk first about the Elaine photography case out of New Mexico. Uh, tell us what the significance is of the Supreme Court passing on this. They didn't rule on it. They just passed on it. Right. The way the procedure works, people ask the Supreme Court to take their case. This case came up through the New Mexico state courts. This started back in 2006, and it's finally just getting to the Supreme Court. And they asked the Supreme Court to take the case because they lost uh, this photographer, uh, photography couple from New Mexico, lost in the New Mexico Supreme Court. They asked the Supreme Court to take it. They declined. Now, just because they declined doesn't really mean that they have ruled on the case or that they've affirmed the decision from the New Mexico uh, State Supreme Court. Just means, you know, we get 7,000 petitions a year, we can only take 90 of them, so yours didn't make it this cut. Now, it, it, this is a, a factual question. I don't want to get down in the weeds here, but usually we think of the state courts as being separate from the federal courts. How do you appeal a state Supreme Court ruling to the U.S. Supreme Court? How does that work? Yes. Well, there are two separate court systems in the United States, one state, one federal. But sometimes when you start out in like a state court, you can have a combination of state questions like yeah, what's our religious freedom rights under our state statutes? But you can also kind of include with that, what are my religious rights in this case based on the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution? Well, the state court decided all of those issues, but the only one that can be appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court is the federal issue, the First Amendment issue. And that's how we get from a state court to the U.S. Supreme Court. And again, they passed on it, so that means there's no precedent set. No other courts can say the Supreme Court said this, but they can point to what the New Mexico Supreme Court said and say, here's an example of what should happen here, right? Yes, and, and that's the damaging part of this. This is a bad decision from the New Mexico court, and it, it, we would hope that it would get reversed, and someday it probably will. Now, I think most people, if you ask them about their First Amendment rights, would say the government cannot force you to create an artistic work that's at odds with your personal values and beliefs. But that's exactly what the Supreme Court said they'd have to do, the New Mexico Supreme Court. Yes, and that is why the case for the photography uh, couple is so strong with a combination of free speech and religious conscience rights. The religious conscience rights are one issue. The free speech rights are another one. And this this is a case where the government is saying to this couple, you have to speak in a manner that is objectionable to you. That's called compelled speech, and it's supposedly prohibited by the First Amendment. Now, it's not unlike, for example, I mean, if you consider photography as an art form, which I think most people would concede that it is, they're being forced to perform their art at odds with their beliefs. It'd be like going to a songwriter and saying, you're going to have to write me a song that supports a particular political candidate, even if the photographer or the singer, rather, didn't support that candidate. Or you're going to have to perform an interpretive dance that supports abortion if you happen to be pro-life. It's that kind of of compelling force that the New Mexico Supreme Court says the state law has over Christians. Yeah, it's the expression that's objectionable. This couple does not want to portray same-sex marriage in a favorable light because it's contradictory to their religious beliefs. Where the liberals get it all wrong is they say that the, this couple wants to discriminate against homosexuals. That's not the case at all. This couple would specifically be happy to photograph uh, this couple in any other setting, just not a marriage setting. And that goes for the florists and the bakers and all the other cases out there where, where couples are running up against 
these non-discrimination laws based on sexual orientation. Now, the, the folks, the experts who follow the, these cases, uh, they keep pointing to the other cases you just mentioned that are coming up through the courts and suggesting perhaps the Supreme Court might be thinking that they'd rather pick up one of those than this one. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think that's a possibility because we need cases that combine both the religious conscience element plus the free speech element. I'm not sure how we get that through the state courts, but there could be there could be a combination that one day will get to the Supreme Court. And we also have to keep in mind that the Supreme Court has two very important religious freedom cases before it right now, and that's the Hobby Lobby case and the Conestoga Wood specialties case. So we may get a ruling by June that will impact these future cases coming down the road. And what's the, the window of time for these other cases in, in this year and years to come? What do you think? Uh, certainly not this year. None of the other cases involving the florists and the cake shops are anywhere close to getting uh, to the Supreme Court. So we're looking at a couple years in the future at least. All right. As we try to digest this as regular humans out here, if you will, about what, what's happening at the highest levels of the courts, what does it tell us about our freedoms as Christians in the United States and particularly for generations to come? Well, they're being trampled right now because of these new laws and because of the way the courts are interpreting them. The religious freedom rights we have under the First Amendment and under the statutes like the Religious Freedom Restoration Act are being made into a second place right behind any rights that the gay activist organizations are demanding. And that has created this quite this culture clash uh, in this country right now, and it, it does not bode well for First Amendment rights going forward. Now, we've been warning about this for years through our articles and videos and whatnot about what's really behind this agenda, that it has to do with whether you have a job, with uh, whether your nonprofit organization, uh, Christian camp, Christian store, whatever, will be able to keep a nonprofit status. It, it has to do with what you'll be allowed to say and do in public that is part of the expression of your Christian faith. Now we've seen enough of the cards turned, if you will, by, by gay activists, especially consider the CEO of Mozilla, who was booted out of a job because he contributed to a, a, a campaign to support marriage. And, and we're seeing these challenges in court over whether people can maintain their faith in the course of their lives and their businesses and their jobs. This is real now. It's no longer theoretical. It certainly is. And the old mantra of, you know, all we are demanding is tolerance. That proved to be false uh, once they hit 51% in the polls uh, in favor of same-sex marriage, and now it's the debate is over, you lose, and now we're going to punish you. And that's just the way it, things have developed. So it's time for people to speak up rather than just letting this roll on by. Now, this is something that needs to be fought in the state legislatures. It needs to be fought in the courts. It's a, it's a look out. We have to do it now or else we'll lose it. All right. Bruce, thanks for your insights, yeah, insights on this. Very helpful. Uh, thank you, Stuart. And thank you for watching. We do appreciate your comments and your questions. You may send them to mail at citizenlink.com. Remember to pray for the, the families, the businesses that are involved in these court cases we were just talking about. Pray that they would be able to withstand the pressures that they're under and the constant attacks that are coming their way. Pray that they would have peace in the midst of that storm. And remember to stand tall and be heard.